Hello and welcome back to my personalized internet homepage. Don't forget to sign my digital guest book by clicking the big red button below. It might currently say something stupid like subscribe, but that's a bug. Today we're talking about Sexy Beasts, which is a new Netflix show, but it's also a very unnatural thing for me to say. Sexy Beasts. Sexy Beasts. Sexy Beasts. I feel like I should say it with like an accent of some kind. Sexy Beasts. <laughs> anyway, Sexy Beasts is a new entry into the long running pantheon of Netflix's dating shows with a twist. Joining the ranks of hot Netflix hits like dating, but you can't have sex. Oh. Dating, but instead of seeing a person, you see a pulsating blue wall. <gasps> is Netflix's hot new show, Dating, but with a different face. <gasps> I'm making it sound like everybody has a different human face, which would be <laughs> horrifying. More specifically, everyone has the faces of beasts. Of beasts. I have to say it like that. Even that feels wrong because like the definition of beast is very loose on this show. Like is a witch a beast? Is a statue man a beast? I guess. But like sometimes people are cute pandas and other times people are boily trolls and I just don't think those two extremes should be under the same umbrella. So Sexy Beasts on Netflix is actually based on a show <laughs> with the same name, not gonna say it, that aired on BBC3. Scott Kramer, friend of the homepage, he did a video about the br original British version of the show so you should watch that. And he also told me to make this video, so thanks, Scott. I wanna get married, I wanna have babies. Before I'm like 26, do you have health insurance? Welcome to the strangest blind date ever. Hoping to say goodbye to superficial dating, real life singles sport elaborate makeup and prosthetics to put true blind date chemistry to the test. So I get that these shows are gonna shit on traditional dating and dating apps, but could you maybe give us something that we can try? Most of us aren't gonna make it onto a Netflix dating show in our lifetimes, and I don't wanna know what's gonna happen if I show up to a regular date in a demon mask. So how was the date? I don't know. This guy was an absolute beast. Oh, fuck yeah, that's sick. No, like he was an absolute beast. He was a monster with like horns and stuff. Hey, how you doing? Damn, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Could you fall in love with someone based on personality alone? Could you fall in love with someone based on personality alone? What a fantastic question that this show does not address. They're just wearing masks. Love is Blind was a much better test of this and it was stupid. What is your ideal woman? Personality for me is everything. First, personality second. Fantastic point, Mr. Beaver. Pretty much the only thing you cannot see on the show is someone's face. And you can still see their eyes and stuff, you know? There's interspecies relationships happening on my grounds. I won't stand for it. Side note, I hate the rhino guy and uh but i will be talking about him later don't you worry your little head even right now the the trailer is sitting at a you know a healthy like to dislike ratio you know and they got pretty ratioed on every social media even the ratio between the sexy beast to the human is not great um so it was, it was ratios all around. So I think people are not a fan. I have taken it upon myself to watch the whole show. It's only six episodes that are 20 minutes long each, but I did it. So you're welcome. So first off, I thought the show was going to be more like Love is Blind, where there's like dates happening, but then there's, there's also some stuff happening outside of the dates, but no. This show is more like a MTV's Next type of formula where it's very isolated. A person starts out at the beginning, they decide who they want to go on a second date with at the end, and, and, that's, and that's that. Every episode, we're introduced to a beast who's going to go on dates with three other beasts. And then they do like a basic bar date with like the three beasts, and then one of them gets eliminated. And then after that, there's, you know, a more in-depth date with the remaining two beasts. And then the beast picks whichever beast that they wanna, they wanna beast with, and then they they take off their beast masks, and then they are revealed to be normal, regular, everyday models. Everyone on the show is a model, and they're all very attractive. So the types of people range from, I'm a professional dancer slash model, to like, I'm a professional athlete 
slash model. And so like, yeah, there's a bit of a mix. Side note, we should use the word eliminated more often. It makes me feel like a cool super villain. Uh, excuse me, we have too many chairs at our table. Could one of them be eliminated? <laughs> I don't want to spoil the whole show for people who actually want to watch it. And, you know, maybe you'll decide to do that. I was entertained. I also have horrible taste, but I was entertained. So I'm going to talk about one episode in particular and kind of pull in the context from the show as a whole while I'm doing that. The episode that I despised the most is episode five, which opens with a dolphin girl named Nina. So this is just a full-on BoJack Horseman episode. You know, I bet they avoided horse masks for, well, I guess horse masks are already a meme, but I, there's no horses in this because they're all in Hollywood. Anyway, Sextina Aquafina is looking for love and she has to choose between a scarecrow, a mantis, and a rhino. And uh, right off the bat, it doesn't seem like it's a fair competition. The scarecrow man has stitched cheeks and that just that just feels too uncanny to me it feels too real i have two secret weapons when dating there's a country boy charm and my smile well with all I, and i'm sure his smile is great but it's hard to appreciate it when his mouth is sewn together <laughs> and my smile i am grossed out by this as well as whatever is going on with his chinny chin chin i guess he's supposed to be a burlap sack man i guess I don't want to think about this guy anymore. And neither did Nina. So he was eliminated. Dustin. And now this brings me back to my earlier point. What is a beast? What is a beast? Because when it gets too close to humanoid, I start to get grossed out. Rhino man here is fine. Mantis guy looks nasty, but he's definitely not human. This is not a problem. But in some of these episodes, there's people like this girl who's like ex has exposed bone in blood? I don't even know what she's supposed to be. What I know for sure is that she's way harder to look at than cute wolf guy. Who's a good boy? Hey, look, I'm not attracted to beasts, okay? I'm just saying that some of them are, e are easier to look at than others. The worst one in the entire season um, is this girl. What did this poor girl do to deserve this costume? She's not a beast by my calculations. She's just an unfortunately faced lady with a permanent frown. Spoiler alert, she is eliminated first, and it probably has something to do with her boily face. So please remind me again how this is different than superficial dating. We're also introduced to the typical snarky Netflix narrator who's trying to tell jokes all the time. I'm looking for the big epic romance. And nothing says epic more than three guys in one afternoon. Okay. A few times in the show, they give hints that not only is it just like two dates maximum that you go on with the person that wins the show, but both the dates happen on the same day, which really just makes me want to see a show where they're in makeup for like a whole couple of months. You know, you could call it love zoo. Um, you could, you could have a tagline that's like this summer love is on the loose or something like that. Come on, Netflix. Do it. In addition to Scarecrow Chin, there's also Mantis Man. He's a model that loves nightlife. So why are you here and not off raving? One day my partying will have to slow down or even stop. One day the partying stops? Say it ain't so, Mantis Man. And finally, finally there's Rhino Dude and he sucks. <laughs> Mick. A holistic health practitioner from LA. I am the techno prince, warrior poet, monkey man, spiritual cowboy on the hero's journey to liberate humankind, yeah. Oh my God, I'm gonna just, a lot of the rest of this video is just gonna be me showing you clips of Rhino Man and just saying how much I don't like him. So I do wanna say, as a disclaimer, that I, it's the case for all my videos and I don't always say it explicitly and I maybe should. When we're talking about these shows, we don't know these people. We're commenting on their actions. We're commenting on the character of the show. There's, you know, selective editing that happens. People's full stories aren't being told. They're not in control of their own narrative. So keep that in mind while I shit on Rhino Dude. <laughs> Any ideas to help you actively find love? Sex Kung Fu. I'm sorry, what? Chinese philosophy with sexual energy meditation. 
Do you love him? I don't know what sex kung fu is, and I never want to find out. But going just by how he talks about it, I don't want to hear I don't want to hear him talk about it. We all have a bit of sex kung fu in us, that's for sure. Mick. Mick the Rhino, man. The dates themselves are super boring. They talk about stuff like how they used to be shy in the past. I grew up very shy. So did I. But now are no longer shy and in fact are so confident that they apply to be on Netflix dating shows. No, I'm crazy. But Rhino guy is confident in like ways that make my skin crawl. But then there's also another side of me that I'm like super energetic. Totally. So it's like a balance, you know? You gotta have the yin, but then the yang too. <laughs> I just, I don't, I can't put it into words. I just, it's just, it's just too much. He is very in tune with himself. And what was he, what was he starting to do there? Was he, was he like starting to dance? You gotta have the yin and then the yang too. I really like that. And to my dismay, Sex Tina Aquafina Nina is into it. What did the elephant say to the naked man? I don't know, what did he say? How can you breathe with that small thing? His wiener. <laughs> <laughs> so after the first dates, they do a little check-in with the contestants and see how they're feeling. You know, you, you know we gotta check in on Rhino Guy. I mean, it's totally up to her, but I was vibing really much so. Really much so. That's, those, those words don't even make sense in that order. <laughs> so with the first dates out of the way, it's time for the eliminations. And uh, Mr. Chinsack is immediately eliminated, like I said. But it's also the first time you see this mansion that they hang out in for like just the eliminations. It seems like a place that you would have a series where you, you had people living in the house, but just using it for these random eliminations seems like so pointless. So one nice thing about the old mansion is that they have a painting of the main beast, in this case, Nina, uh, that makes her look like a Victorian ghost. <laughs> and so that's pretty cool. But that's, that's an aside. It's time for the second date. Dominic is first. So we're at least spared the Rhino Man for a little while. I wouldn't say I have tactics to win. But I would say that I have tactics not to lose. Another complaint with the show is that the dates don't always seem fair. For example, Dominic goes on a bowling date, which is fine, but Mick gets to go on a horse-drawn carriage? Which of these is more romantic? Bowling, obviously. But this happens a lot in the show. There's always one date that's way more romantic than the other. Maybe Nina got to choose, but we're not told that as the audience. There's always like a weirdly platonic date in there. So you kind of, it feels like the, it feels like the, the, the odds are stacked. My favorite part of the bowling date though is when Nina gets the idea that she wants to slide down. You know what I always wanted to do? Slide down the bowling alley. I don't know where she got the idea. Maybe from like a cartoon. Maybe from that old Disney Channel original movie, Alley Cat Strike. I don't know. Did that happen in that movie? Who's to say? Okay. You actually want so, me to slide down the bowling alley. Yeah, what's wrong with that? Like balls go down so like we can go down too. So <laughs> the problem with that argument is that balls go down the lane because they are balls they're spherical and so they don't sl they they can slide they can you know skid you know if you're putting like english on the ball or whatever but as a <laughs> as a human being i feel like you should be able to tell just by looking at this lane that you're not going to be able to <laughs> going to be able to slide on the let's just watch it that was poor i love the guy in the background that's like the fuck did this guy think he's doing? Do you think he was gonna slide? No, Finn. She's really, really cool. She got a little bit of a slide. She got a little bit of a slide. You know, I take it back. I take it back. It was a great idea. Now it's rhino time. I'm that white rhino. I'm a rare find. You're not gonna wanna mm, say no to this. No. I wanna say no to this. Can I say no to this? No. So they go on this horse-drawn carriage ride around the city or the countryside. I don't even know where they are, but most of the stuff that Mick says, I don't understand. 
How does it feel to have nothing but your heart speaking for you right now? It's kind um, of liberating, right? What does that mean? <laughs> what is it? What is it? What does he mean by that? Does he know that Nina the dolphin only has her heart speaking for her right now? I think you're getting some good chemistry there. I just don't understand why everything he says has to linger like that. I think we had some good chemistry there. This date, it's straight out of my dreams. You know, in a way, I do kind of understand where she's coming from. Because sometimes you do have dreams where you're like, I was a dolphin and he was a rhino and we were in a horse-drawn carriage. It was very strange, <laughs> you know, like that kind of dream. That's the kind of dream that this date is out of. Not like a, not like a fairy tale. <sighs> So then, and this is the case in both of the dates, after they do the activity, they go have conversation over drinks. So just when you think things are normal, like they're just having a normal like date over drinks, Mick suggests they meditate. Give me a hand. Let's meditate. Uh, which is like, in what universe do you break out into meditation on a, on a date? A, a, basically a first date. Breathing in through our nose or our snout. Hold. Has anyone ever done that? I've never done that, and I've been on my fair share of first dates. Exhaling all the way out with a sigh. <sighs> the fuck is going on? That's not a sigh, Mick. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if he's meditating or like this is an exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> Just a nice breathing in and breathing out can settle all that good chi and get us in that state of lovey dovey. Why does he dance? Why does he dance when he's doing everything? I. Maybe, maybe I've just never been in that state of lovey-dovey. So then it's time for the decision. And so everyone goes back to the useless mansion that has no use. And Nina, Nina chooses the beast. She chooses her beast. I'm yawning. Ah! Uh, uh. Sorry, that was, <clears throat> I was getting, I was balancing my good chi. <laughs> Hi guys, how's it going? Good, but tense. Stakes are high, babe. Why is he calling her babe? Why is it, they met today. Of course Mick wins, and of course he bows when he wins. Because that's, that is Mick's way. So then it's time for the reveals. And I'm just going to show, I'm just going to show Nina and Mick because I, I don't want to spoil everything in this episode. And there's lots of stuff that you haven't seen. So, um, but I do, you know, it's time for Nina's reveal. This is the real Nina. Incredible. She looks so much better without a massive blowhole. Okay, of course. She's she's gorgeous. Flying skywards. Hi. Oh, there's our culturally appropriate king. Namaste. You're hot. I was not expecting this. God has been kind to you too, baby. It just, oh, he's like playing a Matthew McConaughey character. God has been kind to you, baby. I'm happy with what she looks like. And so right now I can feel my heart just oh, opening. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get this man a medic. His heart is opening. There's been a horrible accident on the set of Sexy Beasts. I think I have to, I, I think I have to be done with this. I have to be done. I honestly was a little shy because I felt like he was like a stranger. I mean, yeah, he still is a stranger. Again, you met today. I liked the animal. <laughs> you got plenty of that, baby. I might be wrapped in a pretty spiritual cowboy, but I'm a beast. Why does he talk like that? What is going on? He's, he's shimmying. Okay. Okay. That's the sexy beast show. Um, again, you, I, I didn't, you know, there's still more to see there if you want to, you know, watch it yourself, but at your own risk, of course. I wasn't the biggest fan, but I did watch the whole thing. So I think that says a lot about me as a person. The makeup is really good. The team behind the original BBC show came back for the Netflix show. They did a great job. The show itself, I can't really say. I myself am not a spiritual cowboy. So I just, I just couldn't be an honest judge of it. But that's the video. Baby. Thanks to, and I genuinely have no idea how to pronounce this, so please correct me. Uh, Dao Du V. 
I definitely said that wrong. My apologies. But thank you for thank you for watching all my videos on Jarvis Johnson Pro. For those of you who don't know, Jarvis Johnson Pro is my uh, YouTube channel for gaming videos where I play with the baddies um, like Danny Gonzalez and Curtis Connor and Gus Johnson and Nick is not green and Elsie Fisher and Sven Johnson and who am I leaving out? Chris Melberger. I also stream on twitch.tv slash Jarvis Johnson. Nobody's watching this. Nobody's watching this at all. In fact, if you're watching this, send me a message that says Kaflimflam, because I bet you're not watching this right now, okay? And that's a threat.